This is my doctor's bag. Um, in it are lots of things, things you would typically find in, um, in a medical office. Dr. Teresa Soriano is not your typical physician. Most mornings, she stuffs her office into a bright orange backpack and heads out on foot to visit her patients around New York City. This morning, Soriano is in East Harlem. She conducts a checkup in Spanish as 91-year-old Rafaela Alvarez muses about her age and condition. 96 years, that's all I want. I don't want to be in this world longer than that. Alvarez suffers from hypertension and a host of smaller ailments. Living in a third floor walk-up, it's tough for her to get outside, let alone to a doctor's office. Thanks to Dr. Soriano, Alvarez can be healthy by staying right where she is. We see their home, we see what kind of bed they're sleeping on, uh, we see whether their refrigerator has food in it or not, um, we see if they need heat or some maintenance work done in the house or the reason they're always falling and coming into the emergency room um, and we try to remedy all of that. Teresa Soriano directs the Visiting Doctors, a 15-year-old program run out of Manhattan's Mount Sinai Hospital. It offers 24-7 physician availability to a group of around 800 homebound patients in New York City. Most days, Soriano walks and walks and walks some more to visit up to six patients. This approach used to be the norm until World War I, when a new wave of medical technology became available. Home visits were time intensive um, and expensive for the physician to do. They couldn't just stay in their office. They had to travel, which took time and um, did not reimburse as well as a quick office visit or seeing a patient in the hospital or doing a procedure in the hospital. But Soriano says in the 1990s, Medicare began to offer increased compensation for home visits again. And a few programs around the country put doctors back out in the community. The population we serve again are mostly the frail elderly patient with more than five medical conditions, um, take many medications, see, uh, go to the hospital or the emergency room at least once per year. This is the same population um, that costs the most to, the, to Medicare and to the country. Estimates say around two million homebound adults live in the United States, a number that will grow with the aging baby boom generation. A potential increase in funds for home visits is a trial feature of the new federal health care bill. Starting in 2012, if house call programs show success in decreasing ER and hospital admissions, they can increase their access to federal dollars to better cover operational costs. That's good news for East Harlem resident Margarito Moran. Six years ago, he suffered a spinal injury and was paralyzed from the chest down. After an extended stay at Mount Sinai, Moran, otherwise healthy, was sent home. The hospital is good. So are the nurses and the doctors. But at the end of the day, the hospital is still the hospital. Moran's wife, Anastasia, has learned some of the necessary skills to keep her husband healthy. He can't do things for himself. I have to do all of that. Wash him, change him, give him medicine, turn him every few hours. I'm always with him. Um, 24 hours a day, so all the extra... Home care isn't perfect for the Morans. Running medical equipment means high electric bills. But Soriano says in the long run, it beats constant hospital visits or costly retirement homes. He's just an illustration of somebody who, because of a chronic illness, even in the absence of other chronic diseases, will live in a very disabled um, way for several decades. A 10-minute walk from the Morans is 96-year-old Fredonia Thomas. Ms. Thomas has been a patient of the Visiting Doctors Project for 10 years. Most recently, she's exhibited signs of Alzheimer's. It's way too warm in here for you. Oh, yeah? I know Since Thomas started getting home care visits, she hasn't been to the hospital once. I feel pretty healthy. I feel pretty good. 
Thomas says, more than anything, it means a lot to have somebody come ask how she's doing every couple of weeks. Ms. Thomas, I would like to just quickly listen to your heart and lungs, if that's okay. She comes, she takes my pressure and everything, you know. I'm checking you out because uh, they have feelings for you and, and you want to tell them what's wrong and how you feel and everything. Sometimes just that reassurance that it's okay um, to take the extra pill today because they have more pain or that we will see them the next morning um, and that they don't have to call 911 is um, a lot of peace of mind and really adds to people's quality of life during a time that they may feel very insecure and, and unsafe and not taken care of. For Time Video, I'm Jesse Hardman in New York.